Hey everyone, so welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about Zoom Notes. So specifically, we are going to be talking about how to connect your Google Calendar or your Apple Calendar to sync with your digital planner within Zoom Notes. This is a great way to sync all of your events and your appointments into your digital planner, making it even more efficient and better to use. Okay, so let's dive in. So we are just going to go over the settings within Zoom Notes so that you can have the same or similar setup as me, what you need to know, what kind of settings you should be looking at, and everything you need to first set up your calendar on your digital planner. Okay, so first, let's go to the main page. So once you import it, it will pop up here. And if you have a cover, you can actually change the settings to make sure that it has a cover. So if you click this, it'll say the first page will be used as a cover page and will be displayed in the main document. The next thing is you want to change up your workspace. So your workspace is all of these icons here. And if you want to change it the way that is best for you, we are going to go back to the main menu of Zoom Notes. We're going to click this gear icon and we're going to go to workspaces. And then where it says main workspace, we're just going to click on that I and we are going to go to tools and features. So you can disable anything, but I just keep everything on so you can go through this and see what you need or don't need. And then we're going to go to user interface. So you'll see there's a top bar, a sidebar, full screen bar and a pages bar. So the top bar, you can decide how many tools are in that top row where the Z is. So I opted for five buttons and you can disable whatever you won't use. Like I won't use the sound button. I probably won't use the geometry button. So I'm just going to keep those and it'll change to whatever you use the most. And then next is the sidebar. So you can choose how many tools you want on your sidebar. I just did the max, which is 10. And then how many colors of favorites you want. So you can make that bigger or smaller. And if you want the layers button. And then the full screen bar. And then we have the pages bar. The pages is what was up here in this corner. So you can have it docked or undocked. And then that's it for that. The next thing is go into interface. So you can decide where you want it. So if you want your main toolbar at the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen, if you want the side settings on the left or the right, and then we'll go to tool settings. So you can, if you wanted a popover or a side panel. So I like the side panel and you can also auto hide the sidebar, but I like to have it open so they could see. And then you can even change the colors of it. And I like Zoom Notes because you can see there's question marks besides each menu item, so it teaches you what everything is for. And if you want that on, you have to click on the show help info. Okay, so once that's all set up, in order to have your calendar set up, the things that you're gonna need to find in your settings is this Z icon, which is like your document details. It also has your calendar, master layers, page tags, and all that. So if you don't see everything, just make sure that advanced is on and you have to go into calendar and make sure that the calendar enabled is selected on. The other thing you're going to need to know is the page info. So the page properties. And when you are making your calendar, you're going to need to go into page properties and then calendar and make sure is calendar page is on. The next thing you're going to need to have that you want to put into your sidebar is the table tool. So if you don't see any of your tables, just click on this wrench and hammer, and then it should have all the tools. Again, this is the basic and this is advanced. So you can see all of the tools and you can just click on table. And I think you can pin it or unpin it to the sidebar right here using that. And then the other tool that you'll need is the shapes tool. So this is the shapes tool. So when you are creating your tables for your calendar to sync to your digital planner, you want to make sure that you go to your layers and that's by using this icon right here and then adding a calendar layer. That way you don't see the lines of the boxes. 
So before you make your tables and everything, you want to make sure that you add that calendar layer and then you can turn the visibility on or off. So you can see how we don't have those harsh lines when it's invisible. And once you have that, you'll still be able to touch the events and everything. So you can see here it says spring break on April 10th. Okay, so even though it's not an active layer, you'll still be able to access your events. So I think that's almost everything we need to know about setting up Zoom Notes. And now we're gonna start setting up this monthly calendar right here. And I'm gonna show you guys how to copy it to the other pages. So let's just do May. And we're just going to create a table that matches this calendar. So we're going to work on this left side first. So we're going to hit the table. Make sure that it is matching this table. So this is four by one, two, three, four, five. So four by five. So we need to make a table with four columns and five rows. And we are just going to draw a table that matches this. Okay, and then we're just going to do the same for the right hand side. So this is three columns and five rows. We're just going to draw that. Again, make sure that it is correct. So three columns by five rows. Just want to line it up perfectly. So once that is set up, you can go into the settings of the table and just scroll all the way to the bottom right here where you see calendar. So again, there's the help button and it says whether this table should be used to show calendar events. So you want to make sure that toggle is on and the same for this table. And once that's on, you want to go into page properties and you want to go into calendar and you want to select is a calendar page and you want to click on month and what month it is. So it's not April, it is May 2023 and then it'll auto populate. So you see it all popped up right there. Now we are just going to fix it up so that it's not blocking the numbers. So in order to do that, we are going to go into the page properties again and where it says event area insets, we are just going to change this. So this is from the top. So we want to bring it down so that it's not blocking the numbers. So let's do 20 millimeters. So we're just going to leave it like that. And if you want to change the font the way I have, you can go into the document properties again and you want to go to calendar, go to configure events. And then you're going to go to planner options and then down here where it says general tabs events sections and notes we're going to click on events and when you open up the events you click on that and then you want to change that font right here so i have it set to this roast chicken so let me just change it to a different font so let's try father farmhouse and then you can even change the size if you want and you can see that my font has changed now so that is what it looks like now okay so now let's go into the events so we're going to go into the document details again go to configure events and then we are going to go down so you can show events from calendars so you can select what calendars are in your months what calendars you use for your weeks and what calendar you use for your day so for the month i like to just have birthdays on holidays on and then my family calendar i don't like to turn on my calendar that one i don't like to turn on my marketing calendar or my tasks to do because then it'll just clutter up my monthly calendar so i'm just gonna hit save and then you can do that also for your weeks so I like to turn on almost everything for this one and then also for the day. So you can see it has my Gmail, which is my Google Calendar. So I like having that. And then I also have my Apple Calendar here. Okay, so that's how you choose what shows up 
on your calendars. So you can see here, if I turn off my family calendar, it will take all of my family calendar events off of it. So I'm just going to turn those back on. And then you can see it came back on. The next thing we want to do is how to show events. So you can change it for the monthly, the weekly, and the daily. So for the monthly, if you want a list where it's just listed one by one, the way I have it set up now, you hit list. If you want it to just have markers, it'll just show like a dot in that calendar color. Or you can do full, but I don't recommend doing full for the monthly calendar. Full is more for the weekly schedule or the daily schedule. So we'll just do list. So if you have my planner, if you are using the calendar for the weekly planner, I would suggest using the list form. But if you're using the weekly schedule, use the full. So I'm using the weekly schedule instead of the weekly plan. And then you can also wrap the events. So if you wrap the events, it will show the entire appointment. So you can see here, it didn't cut off my my appointment there. Instead, it just wrapped it around. So if you didn't wrap it, it will cut it off to just one line. So if you don't have enough space or you have a lot of events, you can turn that off. You can also suggest if it has a border, if you want the background filled or not. You can override the event text color. So you can change all of the events to be a specific color if you wanted. Okay, so once you have all the settings the way you like, the next step is to copy it over to the rest of your planner. To copy this onto the rest of the year, you're going to need to make note of all of the calendars. So June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Or if you're doing all 12 months, you need to make note of every single calendar and then copy those pages. In order to copy those pages, you're going to want to go into your tools and you're going to want to find copy properties. So it'll copy the properties and you want to go to copy date settings and click on page calendar properties. And then it'll say all or selected. You want to make sure you click select it because you don't want it to copy to every single page and you're just going to type in all of those page numbers. So for this planner, we are just going to do June through December and I have it written down if you guys need it for my planner. So I'm just going to copy that. And those are the pages that I want it to copy to. And we're just going to hit copy. And it's going to ask if you are sure you want to copy it. And you're going to hit yes. So it's just going to copy this table and all of its settings onto June, July, August, September. So you might have to adjust it for different months. So we're just going to go and check out the rest of those months. So June is still five rows. And then July, we want to fix this so that it gets 30 and 31. So we're just going to hit table, hit that, and change it to six rows. And the same with this one. And then just adjust it so that it fits this table. Now let's check August, September, October, November, and December. So here we have to change December. Okay, so that's it for the monthly calendar. You have all of your events in there now. You can see it's all set up. If you want to make sure that the months are right, all you have to do is click on this info page, the page properties, and see if it's set to the right month. So December 2023, December 2023. And then that's it. So now let's go in and make our week to-do list boxes. So this layout is a little different than the table. So instead of using tables for the weekly planner the way we did for the monthly, we are going to use the shape tool. So the shape tool looks something like this right here. And when you click it, 
it'll have this blue box. Um, so we are going to make a shape. You can put it in one of these boxes, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna put mine into this bottom box because it's a little bit bigger and it could probably fit more events in there. So what we are going to do is just create one box. So just for this day, we're just going to make it match this box right here. Then we're gonna go into the settings and make sure that there's no fill and maybe even take out the border. And then we are going to go scroll all the way down until you see this calendar toggle and turn that on. So we wanna just copy this box for each of the seven days. So we are just going to hold that and hit copy. And then we're just going to paste it for each of the days. Okay, so now you wanna go into page calendar or page properties, go to calendar is a calendar page. You wanna put the week and then starting on. So this week starts on April 3rd, Monday, April 3rd. And then you're gonna see it pop up. So we have it set up as full, which is the one with the time. So this is like the all day events and then the times. And we don't want that right now since we are in this layout and not the schedule layout. So we're just gonna go into the document details, go to calendar, configure events, and make sure that the weeks are set to list. And then we are going to make sure that all day events aren't above so that we can see everything. And I think that's good. So you can see all of our events for the day in a list view here. So let me show you guys how to do the weekly schedule layout now. So we're gonna go into weekly schedule for the same exact week. And here we are going to make a table. So these tables are gonna be a little bit trickier because of the times. So we need to make sure that we have all the correct settings. So for my planner, you are going to need to make a table that is, so let's go to table. We are going to make the column one column by 17 rows because we are counting the six o'clock as well as the 10 o'clock. And then that should make it perfectly match the planner, the weekly schedule. So now we're just going to hold on to that hit copy and paste it across. Okay, and then before you copy and paste it, you wanna make sure that the calendar is on. So I'm gonna to have to go back and turn them all on one by one. And then you're gonna to go to page properties is calendar page, week starting on April 3rd. And then the events will pop up as a list here. So again, if you aren't on this schedule page, you want it to go on to the correct time. So you're gonna go to the document properties, go to calendar, configure events, and then you are just going to go to how to show events. For the weeks, you're gonna hit full. And from here, you'll see that it goes to when you scheduled these events. If the times aren't matching up, you also wanna make sure. So I can see here that my boys basketball is five o'clock, but it's showing up at eight o'clock. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your settings matches your calendar. So when it says start time, it doesn't start at 5 a.m. I'm gonna to have to change that because my planner starts at 6 a.m. And then it says the day length is 14 hours. You're just gonna count the hours here and change that to match your planner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So the day length for the, my weekly planner is 17 hours. So we're just gonna change that. And now you'll see boys basketball five o'clock matches 
So before you copy these properties, you want to make sure all your settings are correct before. To copy this, you're going to have to go into your tools, copy the properties, page calendar properties, and copy this setting onto all of the weekly schedule. So for this weekly schedule, we are just going to copy it from this page all the way to page 229 because that's when the weekly schedule pages end on my calendar and there's nothing in between any of the schedule pages. So we are just going to hit the page we are on, 190. So we're gonna start at 191 all the way to 229. We're gonna hit return, hit copy, yes. And now you will see that all of our events are set up and copied for all of our weekly schedules. So that's it for the weekly schedule and how to add your calendar. Again, you can configure your events, which calendars you wanna select. So you can select all of your calendars or just some of them. I'm gonna turn them all on for my weekly calendar so that I can see everything. Okay, and the way I set this up for the weekly is very similar to the way you do it for the daily, except the settings are a little bit different. If you have reminders and you want to put reminders like on the side here, I can show you guys that as well. You're just going to use the shape tool. We're just going to just make a box right here. And then take out that blue background. Okay, and then you're just going to go to configure events make sure show reminders is on and then you can select which reminders you want so if you want your daily plan your reminders shopping list you can even like make multiple shapes for each of these if you want so maybe have a box for a shopping list have a box for reminders have a box for bills to pay etc so i'm just going to do daily plan and reminders hit save okay so it's a little different for the shape because we don't want it to be a calendar so when you go on to turn on the calendar setting for the shape right here more options will come up and it'll say calendar or reminders and we want to select reminders and then you can even change the filter by date so only a certain time period if you want, but we're just gonna leave that there. And then you can see my reminders popped up. So I just have faux laundry on there. And I think you can even change the font and everything for the reminders as well. So if you wanna do that, just go into configure events, go to planner options, and then you want to change reminder font size different. So you want to make sure that that is on. You can make it bigger or smaller, depending where you want these reminders to be. Then you can see that I made my reminder font a little bit bigger than my events font. Let me see if I can turn on some more reminders so you can see what it looks like. So we're going to configure events, select like my shopping list. And I like that it's color coded because then you can see everything let's just hit save so there now you can see a whole list of all of your reminders on the side of your weekly planner and it'll be the same for every page as you check it off in your reminders app or even on here you can play around with it so let's see sourdough delights is the reminder and if it's completed we can just select that or we can even set a reminder for us so let's just hit completed. And once it's completed, it should delete from your list. So this is a great way to keep track of your running list every single week or every single day. Again, like I said, you can create multiple boxes for different kinds of lists. So if you want like a shopping um, list box, you can just create a different box. So maybe separate your reminders from your shopping list box. So if you want to make a separate box for like, let's say my San Diego, you can 
change that here. So in order to do that, you're going to have to make sure you're in configure events, select reminder calendars, make sure that your shopping list is on or whatever calendars you're going to be adding. So let's just turn all the ones we want on. And then we're just going to hit save. Done. And then we're going to go back here. We're going to make this things to thrift. There. So now you can see this is a things to thrift box and this is a shopping list box. So that's how you make reminders in your planner. If you want to copy these settings to the rest of your page, again, just go to copy properties, page calendar properties, and then copy them to whatever page you want. So I'm not going to do that right now. All right, guys, so I've covered the monthly calendar, the weekly planner, and the weekly schedule. Now we are just going to go into the daily planner and make our schedule in this table here. What you're going to need for the daily pages are the table tool. And you're going to want to make your column one and your rows 32. And then you're just going to draw it from here and just drag it all the way down. So I already counted all of these rows. If you have my planner, I made it so it's super easy for you. And then we are going to go into page properties is a calendar page. It's today's date, day. The start time is at 6 a.m. The day length is going to be 16 hours for this. We're going to hit done. And then we want to go back into the table setting. Go all the way down. Make sure the toggle is on. And that's it. That's how we get our events to show up in our daily page. And you can see that the example one I did was at 557 and you can see it's lined up perfectly. And let's just make this lined up a little bit better. I want to add my shopping list to my daily pages. So I'm going to make a shape now and we are going to make this top half a shopping list. So I'm just going to go into the calendar. Make sure reminders is on, pick a calendar, and I'm going to pick shopping list. And I'm going to make another box for my personal to-do list. And I'm just going to add it to this here. Calendar reminder, pick a calendar tag. We're just going to put household reminders there. And then maybe for this bottom half, I can make another box for our daily plan. So like any reminders that I put into my daily plan would just pop up there. So now that I like the way everything is set up, I am just going to copy all of the properties, the page calendar properties to the rest of the daily planner pages. So we're going to start on the next page, which is 329 all the way until 606 return hit copy and then yes and make sure that everything is correct and let's check the next day see it all there all right guys so now that we have our calendar set up we are just going to play around with creating events and reminders so to do that you can always just write over your planner. You know, that's what your digital planner was first intended to do. But to make it show up on your app calendar or your Google calendar, what you're going to want to do is hold on to whichever date that you want to create your event on. So let's say we're going to create one for April 6th. So we're just going to hold on to that. And then you'll see this menu pop up and we're going to click on event. 
And you can see it automatically added it to April 6th for you already. We're just going to title this monthly test. And then we're going to want to make sure that it's on a calendar that pops up in your monthly calendar. So I'm going to add it to my family calendar because that's what I have set up for my monthly calendar. And you can turn on alerts if you want. And then we're just going to hit save. And you see there it popped up instantly. And if you click on that event, it'll say monthly test. Same as if you were to click on this event, spring break. Or this one, Max's birthday party. So you can see it has the date and everything. So now let me show you guys how to create the reminders. So let's go into our daily page. And let's just complete one of these reminders. So see, I just clicked on one of my reminders there. And I'm just going to hit completed and then hit save and it automatically erases. But if I want to create a reminder, I'm just going to hold on to that box there and hit reminder. And you see it automatically will add it to my daily plan reminders. So reminder test. And you can even add a date to that reminder within Zoom Notes and then hit save and it'll pop up there for you. So let's try to add an event in our daily planner. So I'm going to try to add an event here. So we'll just click on wherever you want to add the event. And you see I clicked right here and it made the time for 1130. So you can just type in your event or write it with your Apple Pencil. and change it to the calendar that you want. So I'm going to add this to my calendar and hit save. And you see it popped up right there. Now let's go to the weekly schedule. So you can see there on Tuesday at that test event pop up right where I planned it. So yeah, that's how you create events and reminders within Zoom notes in your digital planner. Okay, so that's basically it. I know that was a lot. Zoom notes can be quite confusing, but once you get the hang of it and once you have your calendar set up, it's all good to go. So let's go back and see what our week looks like. So again, I have the weekly schedule. So this is the weekly planner, but I don't really use this. So I'm going to erase these boxes because I like using the weekly schedule in the full format more. And then Let's go and see what the month looks like. And there's all of my events from my Google Calendar, my Apple Calendar, even my husband's calendar and everything. So if you have it connected to your iCloud account, it should all populate here. And then I even have like my reminders. So in my daily pages, let's go here. You can see I made this into my shopping list and then I made this into my daily plans. And I made this into my household reminders. So again, if you want to change any of those calendars or reminders, you'll just go into this document properties menu and you can go into calendar and configure all the events and just play around with it. Make sure the help is on so that you can learn what each item is for. Okay, so that's my entire zoom notes tutorial i hope you guys like that if you guys need help setting it up for my planner specifically i'm going to list them all down below with the daily settings the weekly settings the page numbers and all that for you to at least save you a little bit of time so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video